Thank you for dropping by for my daily devotions. It is Sunday, January the 7th, 2024. We are one week into the new year. And um, I, I'm staying home from church today. I got a cold and I'm trying to beat it so I can go back to work and all that kind of stuff. So pray that I can beat this cold and feel good. And I got a couple of funerals to do this week and uh, the normal work that I do along with keeping up with my YouTube channel takes a lot of energy and I'm 75 years old. I need the energy to keep it all going and I would love to get this channel monetized so I can devote more time and effort to it because it ministers to people, which is my goal. We're going to look at Ephesians 3, John 15, Psalm 6, Deuteronomy chapter 2 today. Yesterday we read the fifth psalm, and let me tell you what occurs to me when I read the fifth psalm, first two verses. This is a psalm of David, okay, and uh, wrote it for flutes, believe it or not. He says, consider, give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my sighing, listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I do pray. Did you ever think about just asking the Lord to listen carefully to your prayer? It's exactly what David's doing. David's in a bad spot. He was always in bad spots. And he wrote a psalm about it. He said, Lord, listen up. I need your help. Sometimes we need to do that. It only makes sense. Hang on to that. And when you need God's help, tell him, God, I need you, Lord. I need you. Listen up. Hope you'll start praying that way. I do. I do. I really do. Uh, let's take a minute and pray. Father, speak to us today. Change our lives by what we hear you say in the Bible, in your word. Crawl inside us with that truth and make us different. Do that to me today as I listen to you speak. For I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Ephesians, the third chapter. Great stuff. You know what? You always hear something new when you read the Bible. And, and certainly... If we, uh, that happens to me every day. Hope it happens to you and that it's life transforming for you. Third chapter of Ephesians. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentile, dude was in prison, okay? In stocks, in prison with Roman guards around him when he wrote this. Surely you've heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you, this is the mystery that was made known by Revelation, as I've already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promises of in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of the gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Though I am less than all than the least of all the of God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now through the church the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. The ministry is supposed to happen through the church. The church. Don't forget that. Need to be a part of a church. According to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom the, his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Wow. That to grasp that is powerful because it transforms you, okay? And to know his this love which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the measure of the fullness of God, filled with the fullness of God in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what he's talking about. Now to him who is able, 
to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. That's a mouthful, a mouthful. To him be the glory in Christ and in the, in, in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. John chapter 15. This is a great chapter. John chapter 15. The vine and the branches. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will, will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. You re now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Folks, that's a mouthful. Jesus was nailed to a cross for us. We're supposed to love each other the same way. And we do when we walk with the Lord. You can't, you're born into that, okay? That's how we love each other. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to be, to go and bear fruit fruit that will last, then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I, have, I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obey my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and if I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen these miracles, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in the law. They hated me without reason. When the Counselor comes, the Holy Spirit, when the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you, will, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from... The beginning and then psalm 6 another psalm of david O lord do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath be merciful to me lord for i am faint O lord heal me for my bones are in agony my soul is in anguish how long O lord how long Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. No one remembers you when he is dead. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because, all of, because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayers. All my enemies will be ashamed and dismayed. They turn back in sudden disgrace. And then Deuteronomy chapter 2. 
Deuteronomy chapter 2. Going to get a little bit of the whole counsel of God today. Do that every day, man. That's how you live. Okay? That's how I've lived for about 52 years now. This month, in fact, 52 years. Started walking with the Lord, reading the Bible, praying every day. When we turned back and set out toward the desert along the route of the Red Sea, as the Lord had directed me, for a long time we made our way around the hill country, around the hill country of Sire. Then the Lord said to me, You have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north. Give the people these orders. You are about to pass through the territory of your brothers, the descendants of Esau, who live in Sire. They will be afraid of you, but do not be but but be careful. Do not provoke them to war, for I will not give you any of their land, not even not even enough to put your foot on. I have given Sire the hill country of I have given Esau the hill country of Sire as his own. You are to pay them in silver for their food and eat for the food you eat and the water you drink. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast desert. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you have not lacked anything. So we went on past our brothers, the descendants of Esau who live in Sire. We turned from the Arabah road, which comes up from Elath and Ezion Geber, and have traveled along the road, uh, the desert road to Moab. And the Lord said to me, Do not harass the Moabites or provoke them to war, for I will not give you any part of their land. I have given our to the descendants of Lot as a possession. The Emites <clears throat> used to live there, a people strong and numerous and as tall as the Anakites. Like the Anakites, they too were considered Rephites, but the Moabites called them Emites. Horites used to live in Sire, but the descendants of Esau drove them out. They destroyed the Horites from before them and settled in their place, just as Israel did in the land the Lord gave them as their possession. And the Lord said, Now get up and cross the Zered Valley. So we crossed the valley. Thirty-eight years passed from the time we left Kadesh Barnea until we crossed the Zered Valley. By then the entire generation of fighting men had perished from the camp, as the Lord had sworn to them. The Lord's hand was against them until he had completely eliminated them from the camp. Now when the last of these fighting men among the people had died, the Lord said to, to me, Today you are to pass by the region of Moab at Ar. Uh, when you come to the Ammonites, do not harass them or provoke them to war, for I will not give their, you possession of any of the land belonging to the Ammonites. I, I have given it as a possession to the descendants of Lot. That too was considered a land of the Rephites who used to live there. But the Ammonites called them Zamzumites. They were a people strong and numerous and as tall as the Anakites. The Lord destroyed them from before the Ammonites who drove them out and settled in their place. The Lord had done the same for the descendants of Esau who lived in Sire. When he destroyed the Horites from before them, they drove them out and have lived in their place to this day. And as far as the Avites who lived in the villages, as far as Ge Geza, the Kaftorites coming out of Kaftor destroyed them and settled in their place. Set out now and cross the Arnon Gorge Sea. See, I have given it. Set out now and cross the Arnon Gorge Sea. I have given into your hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon and his country. Begin to take possession of it and engage him in battle. This very day I will begin to put the terror and fear of you on all the nations under heaven. They will hear reports of you and will tremble and be in anguish because of you. From the desert of Kedemoth, I sent messengers to Sihon, king of Heshbon, offering peace and saying, Let us pass through the country. We will stay on the main road and will not turn aside to the right or to the left. Sell us food to eat and water to drink uh, for the price of silver. Only let us pass through on foot. As the descendants of Esau, who live in Sire, and the Moabites, who live in Ar, did for us, until we crossed the Jordan into the land the Lord our God is giving us. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, refused to let us pass through, for the Lord your God has, has had made his spirit stubborn and his heart obstinate in order to give him into your hands, as he has now done. The Lord said to me, See, I have begun to deliver Sihon and his country over to you. Now begin to conquer and possess his land. When Sihon and all his army 
come out against, against out to you to meet us in battle at Jahaz. The Lord our God delivered him over to us, and we struck him down together with all his sons and his whole army. Together with his sons and his whole army, at that time we took his towns and completely destroyed them, men, women, and children. We left no survivors. But the livestock and the plunder from the towns we had captured, we carried off for ourselves. From Arior on the rim of the Arnon Gorge and from the town of the gorge, even as far as Gilead, not one town was too strong for us. The Lord our God gave us all of them. But in accordance with the command of the Lord our God, you didn't, didn't, did not encroach on any of the land of the Am Am Ammonites, neither the land along the course of the Jabbok, nor around the towns in the hills. Well, the Lord has spoken. God has spoken. We heard his word. Let's pray. Father, bless this day with power, grace, and authority. Thank you for speaking. Help me get over this cold so I can have a great week. And I pray that you'd use this channel to impact people's lives with the truth of your word. Thank you for crawling inside us and speaking and changing our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.